WWE shows the montage of all those who have successfully cashed in the Money in the Bank briefcase. Someone check on Otis and make sure he's not fuming in anger with Chad Gable. There's no one left! You think you know me. Exciting as it was to see Edge suddenly show up to challenge Roman Reigns at Money in the Bank, this just shows that Paul Heyman's phrase of there's no one left has no relevance, because a previous victim of Roman's rampage has shown up to challenge him once again. Catchy as this song is, this is basically the theme song replacing Donald Trump's old theme. I like catchy songs as much as the next guy, but WWE reuses previous theme songs as much as they have constant rematches on Monday Night Raw every week. I pray that I am wrong with this sin, but soak in this moment as best you can. The odds are high that this might be one of the few times we get to see the sight of 14,000 plus fans in attendance before going back into quarantine for a number of months. Knocking on wood, praying that I am wrong. But yeah, let's restart the counter because no doubt this is an extremely emotional sight to behold. The sight of a full attendance for the first time since March 2020. One year and four months truly feels like ten years. But it's not about Mella tonight. Well, it could have been about Carmella tonight, but instead she gets a random title match for no reason other than Bianca Belair needed an opponent, which she kinda did not. For up to one year! But with the exception of Carmella, it truly feels like the women believe they only have 24 hours to cash in the Money in the Bank briefcase, given nobody since 2017 lasted longer than the post-Money in the Bank edition of Monday Night Raw. The evil is mine. The evil is mine doesn't really make a lot of sense, because the term evil is a feeling, not an actual being. So how can the evil be the property of Alexa Bliss? Does this mean Roman Reigns technically is the property of Alexa Bliss since he's evil and the evil is Alexa's? Plot twist! In this shot, Alexa Bliss is supposedly waving to the CGI graphic of Lily the doll. Kinda awkward given she technically cannot see Lily like everyone else in the arena can't see the CGI graphics. You know, honestly, this would have been the perfect time for Alexa Bliss to rip off the skirt, reveal her goddess outfit, and all of a sudden her original theme plays, thus showcasing that the Alexa Bliss we know and love is back. She's not doing a bad job with the current gimmick. I'm just saying, the fans are back. The supernatural stuff doesn't work with live people in attendance. Plus, it'd be an epic return. Previously on WWE. Also, this flashback of Alexa's previous Money in the Bank victory is awkward given this is a different incarnation of Alexa Bliss compared to who's currently in the ring. Booby Eyes. Nikki A.S.H. is known as almost the superhero, though what's it gonna take for her to be completely a superhero? She wins this match tonight, cashes in the following day, becomes Raw Women's Champion, and she's still almost a superhero? Does she gotta win the Royal Rumble and then main event WrestleMania or something? Greg Hamilton says, and from, which is usually safe for the final participant in a multi-wrestler match. Then you have Asuka backstage yelling, Watashi wa anate e no jaradeska, which is Japanese for, am I a joke to you? I get that the 2017 edition of the Elimination Chamber pay-per-view was the night Naomi won her first SmackDown Women's Championship, but if they wanted to show great moments, they should have shown the time she won the title at WrestleMania 33. Man, I miss Orlando very much. Can't believe it's been four and a half years since that WrestleMania. It's creepy indeed how Alexa Bliss is just balancing herself on the ropes during the entrances and the start of this match, but how is everyone else ignoring her? If I were there, I'd be like, what the hell is wrong with this chick? I'm so creeped out. We should all team up and attack her or something. Why the hell is Natalia setting up a ladder that's outside of the ring far off from the briefcase? Like, how is this going to help her win the match at all? Or is she simply looking for climbing practice? The ladder, she says. Seeing Alexa Bliss skipping around the ring, the familiar looking ring gear, and the added paleness to the skin. Holy shit, Alexa is cosplaying as Paige tonight! How the hell did I not notice this the first time? The hell? That's not how the Force works. And there's Zelina Vega! A Zelina Vega really needs to improve her game. She hits Asuka one time and automatically starts taunting her, forgetting there are six other fresh women competing in this match that's less than a minute long. Nobody is meaner than Tamina. Mina then to Mina. Both Michael Cole and Tamina gets a sin because nobody likes a rhymer. Sounding like a win only gets you a sin. Wait. Got their own beef just got when other wrestlers are trying to interfere, Tamina is faster than she normally is. But when it's time to grab a ladder and set it up, even a snail managed to unhook the briefcase before she had the chance. Power of Tamina! And because Asuka ran underneath the ladder, any chance of regaining the momentum she had throughout 2020 has been lost. Somebody with a ladder! And now look at this, I if Asuka really wanted to keep Tamina pinned underneath the ladder, she should have started to climb from the side where Tamina is actually pinned, because climbing the other side just gives her the chance to tip the ladder over. Told you that you shouldn't have gone underneath the ladder. No joke, this tug of war between Liv Morgan and Natalia goes on for quite a while, even amidst the other wrestlers interfering. Natalia and Liv just stand there and let all this happen. For the moment Naomi climbed onto the ladder, I would have tipped it over. What? This works. 
Also, if Alexa Bliss can do this, then why doesn't she just do it to everybody? Here's the problem with supernatural powers in wrestling. Makes you question why they don't do it all the time to their advantage. Like Matt Hardy teleporting in AEW. Don't look at the psycho! Looks like Asuka isn't the only one who gave herself bad luck by going underneath ladders. Poor Zelina Vega came back just to suffer the same fate. No one cares what's trending. And Morgan, oh and a double team! Double team? You can't be serious, right Michael? None of this was a double team move. It was Naomi hitting a powerbomb on Liv Morgan onto the ladder, conveniently where Zelina Vega was lying. We wondered if they were gonna Naomi! I guess Alexa Bliss isn't the only one in this match with supernatural powers. Naomi managed to kick Tamina, meanwhile she missed Natalya completely but still got her at the same time. The force is real and you're wrong to deny it. That's the third one who's gone underneath ladders tonight. And poor Natalia, the bad luck of going under ladders foreshadowed her unfortunate knee injury. The feet of strength I've never seen before! Oh bullshit, I'm pretty sure Pat McAfee has seen better feats of strength involving women in WWE. Sure he hasn't been around for very long, but even he knows there have been better feats of strength. Ladder! Nikki! Nikki A.S.H. takes all the time in the world on the ladder while everyone in the ring is standing around like, Will you hurry up and jump already? I hate it when wrestlers take forever to jump when the opponents are awkwardly standing around for no reason. She fly! She does! Zelina Vega clearly did not get hit by Nikki at all, but fell simply for the joy of falling down. Ring around the rosy, y'all. Not enough, two ladders. We interrupt Money in the Bank 2021 to bring you any ladder match involving the big show or someone close to his size. I tell you, face. Whatever the hell is going on here with Natalia and Liv Morgan, they look like WWE 2K20 characters in glitch mode. Fans can complain about how they wanted a certain someone else to win the match all they want, but you can never deny that this is the most creative and strategic way to win the Money in the Bank ladder match ever. Normally, everyone fails to get the briefcase when they're all on the ladders, but it's awesome to see someone sneak past the carnage and unhook the briefcase while they're busy. 15 cents removed for Nikki's awesome win. Previously on Money in the Bank. Man, I feel bad for Roman Reigns in this shot. He's the only member of the bloodline without a championship. The Usos are the SmackDown Tag Team Champions, and even Paul Heyman is the Universal Champion since he's hanging on to the belt. We gotta get the Intercontinental title on this man, just so we can have a championship. Enough. Velcro titles. Seriously, why the hell are the wrestlers using Velcro straps on the actual championship belts? Even the replica titles use the button snaps. Thus, the replica titles have more value than the real ones. That's just sad. You the tribal chief. And from this moment, the entire SmackDown division is fucked, and I'm loving it. Bloodline and full force. Entertaining as this was throughout 2020, I'm surprised that the one thing WWE has not shown a flashback to is the time the Viking Raiders won the Raw Tag Team titles, because they actually have done that for anyone that somehow forgot. Question, why does Omas wait until after AJ Styles executes his pyro before entering the arena? We actually end up forgetting he's there until he appears on stage. You never have to ask, where is Omas? Well, I literally just did moments ago because he was nowhere to be found when AJ Styles was performing his entrance, but go right on ahead. What were you saying again? About anything you can do, I can do better. Oh god, please don't tell me that AJ Styles and Amos are about to have another series of contests like the Viking Raiders had with the Street Profits last year. I'm still trying to wrap my head around the charades game AJ and Omos had with the New Day prior to WrestleMania. But ineffective strategy. Heel wrestler claims that the ring is his house once he knocks over his opponent's cliche. Boy, the one thing I was hoping for was Omos not activating a cliche. Ivar making the big mistake of posing for the audience while AJ Styles recovers and inches close to Amos. I can understand the excitement of performing in front of fans again, but focus, dude. Let's do it, the Viking Raiders. They oh! Well, ouch. That looked freaking brutal from the Viking Raiders. What an awesome double team maneuver. Here's a sin off. That's a proud champion. In a dropkick that barely grazed Eric's shoulder was somehow enough to send him sailing out of the ring like that. WWE logic. Assisted by Omos. And a perfect double team maneuver from AJ Styles at Amos. This pay per view event is really exciting in the early going. Hope I didn't just jinx that. Right now. Oh. The athleticism of Ivar continues to amaze me to this day, even if I've seen him do that so many times. He really knows how to sell the moment. No way. No way. What? Yeah, I realize that Ivar is pretty big, but come on, how the hell is it unbelievable that Omos, someone who's 7 foot 3 and over 400 pounds, can lift Ivar and slam him down with ease? Honestly, if I were Eric, I wouldn't have gone after Omos. By the time the referee would have finished counting, Omos would have just finished climbing into the ring. Eric inadvertently cost his own team the Raw Tag Team Championship. I have to win this match. I don't want to win this match. I have to win this match. It is my destiny, cliche. Bobby might be getting a little soft. Gotta give props to Kofi Kingston, because up until Bobby Lashley started annihilating his opponents, the term Almighty WWE Champion was a mere nickname and nothing more. 
Kofi sacrifices himself so that the actual almighty WWE Champion could emerge. This bullshit needs to stop now. Actual footage of Bobby Lashley talking to the WWE creative team about all the constant rematches that happen every week on Monday Night Raw somehow made its way into this promo package. It's a new day! Yes it is! The New Day's music is completely off sync to the words appearing on the Titan Tron. Double stomp move wasn't that impressive given that Kofi Kingston barely grazed Bobby Lashley's shoulder at all. Lashley turns it around! I think you mean Bobby Lashley turns it around, not churns it around. Granted, churn is an actual word, but it has a completely different meaning. Oh. Oh. This entire 8 minute squash match was absolutely frightening. This is the Bobby Lashley we should have gotten when he first became WWE Champion. The complete annihilation of Kofi Kingston was scary. Here are 5 sins off. Good lord, three pay-per-views in a row where Charlotte Flair gets a title match just because. WrestleMania Backlash, she loses. Gets another match at Hell in a Cell because she didn't get pinned at the former. And now a third match against Rhea Ripley tonight because of a disqualification. Either give Rhea a new opponent or just have her not defend the title tonight while the remaining women are in the Money the Bank ladder match. Annoying as this rivalry was at times, I gotta take a sin off for the way both Rhea Ripley and Charlotte Flair feigned their injuries. Charlotte because she's a Flair, and Rhea because she knows she's dealing with a Flair. Rhea Ripley's non-pyro pyro. Seriously, why are we continuing to do this? Why the constant flashbacks to when a wrestler competing in each match won a championship or any big time match? Please don't tell me this is what we're gonna be doing going forward. Rhea, she was often compared to Charlotte Flair. Man, this truly shows how gullible the fans can be at times. Chanting, we want Becky, figuring that Becky Lynch was going to show up because of bogus internet rumors. Way too easy. Rhea Ripley, you are not ready for these kind of moments. Sure, let's just forget that Rhea Ripley had a big moment at WrestleMania this year by winning her first Raw Women's Championship. If she wasn't ready, she wouldn't have won. You see, this is why you don't spread rumors about a potential wrestler's return. The fans instantly believe everything they read, they start chanting the wrestler's name at the event they're likely returning at, the wrestler doesn't return, and they all look like a bunch of idiots. I miss the full audiences, but not this part of them. No wonder 2020 to 2021 seemed peaceful. I have learned from you. These knees to Charlotte are not even connected with her. Could we see a title change hands right now? Jimmy Smith just spoiled the ending of this match and figured this was the moment Charlotte was going to win the Raw Women's Championship from Rhea. Even though Rhea kicked out just as the referee finished the two count, the referee still decides to lift his hand and aim for the three count to a pin that no longer exists. Booby spanking. It, Jimmy. Oh, here it comes. Rhea Ripley, knowing how she hasn't had the chance to defeat Charlotte Flair in title matches before, hesitates for like five seconds before attempting to connect the riptide. The natural selection from the top rope, Rhea's kick out at the last millisecond, and the energy from the fans in attendance, this is what we truly miss from wrestling. Rhea Ripley got disqualified at Hell in a Cell for hitting Charlotte with the announced table cover, but here at Money in the Bank, when Charlotte hits Rhea's leg with the steel stairs, she doesn't get disqualified at all. This is bullshit if you ask me. To all the fans who say nobody wants to see Charlotte Flair as a champion, what do you got to say about this extremely loud standing ovation she received upon winning a championship? Sure, the number of titles gets annoying, but you can't deny that Charlotte gets great reception from the crowd. You're like the modern day Shreddy Krueger. Modern day Shreddy Krueger. Also, shockingly enough, for a lot of wrestling fans, this is the first time they're ever looking at this footage from the Money in the Bank pay-per-view, given the streaming issues that took place. This is why I watch my... pay-per-views on my TV channel. No internet connection required. And play Randy Orton's theme music. Honestly, now I wish I was the one with the streaming issues. We're on a tight schedule here, Riddle. Time for the Money in the Bank ladder match. Kevin Owens and his continued feud with the bottom rope. Still wondering what the hell the bottom rope did to Kevin to make him hate it so much. Also, nearly 13 goddamn minutes of entrances. We're really trying to drag this pay-per-view out, aren't we? Riddle is very careful and cautious with his scooter, but doesn't mind if he crashes it into the steel stairs, potentially damaging it. Even with those CGI birds flying on the screen, I still place the haha you failed sin because one of Riddle's flip flops did not go sailing into the air. Shinsuke Nakamura's non pyro pyro. Oh, come on, we have actual pyrotechnics in the arena. Seems like everyone is getting their own non pyro pyro these days. Adding Ricochet to that list now. 
Only The Miz and John Morrison could bring in drip sticks to the WWE and make them look hilarious and fun. John Morrison does bring up a good point. The Miz is in a wheelchair, and there's little to nothing he could do to assist John in a ladder match. So what's The Miz complaining about? Sure, I guess Seth Rollins has some pyro, but once again, nothing explodes when you hear the explosion noise. They really need to stop doing that. And then Drew McIntyre accidentally drops the sword in the air, which plunges through his eyes. The end. Man, this really is not the night for pyrotechnics, is it? A lot of non-pyro pyros, and now the pyro being off sync to Drew McIntyre plunging the sword into... Uh, that Minecraft-looking block thing. Masterpiece. Seth Rollins is more interested in how John Morrison designs his hair and makes himself look sexy than winning this ladder match. All the little guys are sent out of the ring, leaving the two big guys to stare at each other in the ring cliche. Why did I feel this was gonna happen? Guarantee Ricochet just got Royal Rumble 2020 flashbacks when Drew McIntyre tossed him out of the ring like that. And of course, what'd be a ladder match without a first ladder introduced is too small to reach the prize cliche, am I right? Damn, this event missed the fans so much they wanted to make sure all the cliches were activated for nostalgic purposes. Sitting wrong for the moment! Whoa! Well, holy shit! Let's take away three sins! Never thought I'd be seeing Kevin Owens doing a springboard moonsault onto a waiting ladder like that. We're definitely in for a fun night. Oh, no! No! Ah! And here's another sin off because I felt that pain when Kevin Owens landed on the ladder. Good lord, that was brutal. Man, Drew McIntyre! Oh. Drew McIntyre is unloading on John Morrison, who is reacting to every other punch rather than every punch. Oh. They're only groaning in pain because they know John Morrison missed Drew McIntyre completely and wanted to make sure John wasn't completely injured. In on the fun as well. oh. Who would have thought I'd ever remove a sin for Riddle performing an RKO out of nowhere? 2021 is an interesting year for wrestling, that's for sure. Nakamura sends Ricochet. <laughs> I'm sorry, it's just funny to see Riddle try to throw a ladder at Big E in the corner, but Big E is protected by the ropes. Fear, fear it, oh, no. Boy, I'm really getting flashbacks to 2017 when Jinder Mahal had the Sin Brothers always interfere in matches. Now we have Veer and Shanky, apparently. Those are weird ass names. Trying to upend the ladder! What a fantastic Money in the Bank highlight with Ricochet getting pushed off the ladder only to bounce off the ropes and flip onto this competition on the outside. Man, I love this match. It's water! Yet this is somehow enough to put out Shinsuke Nakamura? I've been splashed by water my whole life. You got like one, maybe two seconds to realize what happened and compose yourself, but you're not in any real pain. Oh yeah, that was there. Forgot all about that bridge. Big E definitely deserves the praise for this Money in the Bank win. Next to Kofi Kingston, Big E was the other member of New Day that I've always wanted to see one day become a world champion. Here's the scene if it works out. It wasn't good enough! This sequence of Seth Rollins being pissed off about losing blatantly spoils that he is going to cost Edge the Universal Championship coming up next. Did we have to see this to confirm what we already figured out? If you look carefully, you can see the tiny words saying, Sorry we fucked this match up by adding in unnecessary participants at WrestleMania below Roman Reigns and Edge. I'm inevitable. Edge just destroyed his chances of winning this match against Roman Reigns by declaring himself to be inevitable. Nobody who calls themselves inevitable ever wins. Money in the bank is presented by- Skip! No joke, we had to wait nearly two damn minutes in between Edge's entrance and Roman Reigns' entrance. And if you combine the amount of entrances shown tonight, that's close to one hour. An entire third of this three-hour pay-per-view is entrances. I guess it sadly wouldn't be a 30-plus minute main event without staring contests. Oh well, gotta count the sins. Here, let me speed this up for y'all. The first five to six minutes of this match is a stare down, some lockups, a few taunts, and repeat. WrestleMania, but that's gonna happen in Roman Reigns continues his onslaught of Edge, but then takes a moment to admire Charles Robinson's hairstyle. Must be that good if even the head of the table is impressed. Now in Roman, Roman Reigns! Roman Roman Reigns. Michael Cole might believe that saying his name twice will grant him acknowledgement powers or something. As fun as this match was, it absolutely dragged on and on. What you're looking at right now is all you're going to be looking at for the next five minutes. If you're going to have a match last 30 minutes, don't drag it to the point where it feels forced. Meanwhile, on the spa side of the arena. Wonderful thing for a father to help his kids see the action going on in the ring, but they're also inadvertently being dicks to the people sitting behind them. And now Edge! Edge was trying to conceal his excitement about a certain someone being backstage ready to appear, but couldn't resist locking in an STF just to let the fans know, yes, he's here. Heel wrestler tosses himself into the barricade after his opponent moves out of the way, destroying it in the process, cliche. And this night is full of cliches. 
Even if we all knew that Edge wasn't winning the Universal title at this moment, I still gotta take a sin out because of Pat McAfee being a crazy fan in the background. That is how you act like a crazy fan on commentary while keeping an unbiased attitude on the mic. Superman punch! Just when I think we've covered all the cliches, there's still one more left to count. The referee gets knocked over at the crucial point of the match cliche. Though the way this referee was knocked over was poorly executed. Nearly two minutes of Roman realizing the referee was down and heading off to break the chair leg. No wonder Edge easily counters. You take forever, asshole! Damn, you gotta admit the Usos look absolutely badass the way they're heading into the ring to attack Edge. Even if the Mysterios save the day, it's still awesome to see the Usos menacingly approach the ring instead of the traditional hit and run routine. One would think that Seth Rollins would want to take the Universal Championship from Edge rather than Roman Reigns given it was Edge who cost him the title shot in the first place by getting his own for no reason. Wow, Roman Reigns won't even stay down for a three count being counted by the fans in attendance. That or he was so out of it that he accidentally thought the fans were the actual referee. Post-match assault. Very awkward to see the stare-downs between Seth Rollins and Roman Reigns since both men go into separate rivalries literally seconds later. Makes you wonder if we'll ever see this feud launch. Oh For once, instead of the cringe oh my, you can hear the legitimate reaction of Michael Cole when the legendary John Cena returned, and Pat McAfee with the added wear for comedic purposes made it even better. You're a 30 sins removed because this was just as exciting as the fans returning. 